So, we've looked at a lot of the basics of sentence diagramming, uh, starting with very simple things like putting in your subject and your verb, uh, things like adjectives and adverbs that go with, moving on to prepositional phrases, uh, things like compound subjects and predicates, compound and sen complex sentences, and things like that. And so these are sort of the basic principles that you will use to diagram sentences. And with this basic structure, you should be able to diagram just about anything. Now, the demonstration of that, once upon a time, many, many long years ago, when I was in sixth grade, I had a sixth grade teacher who demonstrated the power of diagramming and demonstrated, yes, indeed, you can use diagramming to diagram just about anything. And so for this demonstration, she picked up a book. It was Dickens, um, Oliver Twist. Uh, those of you who may be familiar with Dickens know he writes a lot of very long and complicated sentences with a whole lot of things going on in them. But even if that sentence is really big and very complicated, it is still possible to diagram that sentence provided you break the components down to look at them. So, when she picked up this book, Oliver Twist, and flipped the book open somewhat at random, um, and she found a sentence to diagram, this was the one that she came up with. It's the first sentence in chapter three. For a week, after the commission, of the impious and profane offense of asking for more Oliver remained A close prisoner in the dark and solitary room to which he had been consigned. by the wisdom and mercy of the board. So, we have this sentence. There's a big sentence. There's a lot going on. We have um, prepositional phrases. We have some dependent clauses. So now what we want to do is take apart the pieces of this sentence so we know what kind of components we have that we want to put in the diagram. So we'll start at the beginning. We have for a week. There is a prepositional phrase. After the commission, another prepositional phrase. Of the impious and profane offense. There we have another prepositional phrase. Then we have of asking for more which is not just a prepositional phrase. It's a prepositional phrase that has the verbal asking in it. So it's a prepositional phrase with asking as its object. Then we have Oliver remained a close prisoner. Here's our subject and verb. Um, then we have a subject complement, a close prisoner. Then we have in the dark and solitary room. There's another prepositional phrase. Then we have to which he had been consigned. So we have another prepositional phrase, to, and then which he had been consigned is a dependent clause. So we've got that piece. And then we have by the wisdom and mercy of the board. So these are the basic components of this sentence that we are now going to want to work into the structure of our diagram. So the first thing we want to do 
is we say, okay, we've gotten rid of a whole bunch of prepositional phrases and dependent clauses and a couple of verbals. So what's remaining that's not in the brackets? That's going to be the core of our sentence. Oliver remained a close prisoner. So that's our core of our sentence. So we do our basic framework. So if Oliver remained a close prisoner. Now we want to take this structure and look at it to see where the rest of this sentence will continue.